But right. the, but yeah, and, and how how it comes into play? It's at a way lower scale than those serious situations. But you can look at Cam Newton and Peyton Manning. All right, so Cam Newton, he went, he did have some things that went on in his college years. I mean, not nothing serious, but right now in his NFL career, the worst thing the biggest say this man did is he did the dab, and he didn't answer some questions after he lost the Super Bowl. And they are treating him like he's some sort of thug. He's, you know, some sort of criminal. Like, this stuff that, this real-life stuff going on, but you'll turn on the news for hours and hours. They're talking about Cam Newton didn't answer questions, or Cam Newton did a dance. And Peyton Manning, on the other hand, and they're actually saying that, you know, like when, when the Super Bowl is around, you know what? Cam needs to be more like Peyton. Look at him. He had this, this scully on and this hoodie. He needs to wear a suit like Peyton. He needs to be just like Peyton. Like, I don't know where on earth a 26-year-old man from the hip-hop culture from Atlanta is going to be like some 40-year-old white. It's just, it's just not reality. He's not going to be the same. But it actually turns out that, like, um, almost 20 years ago when Peyton was in, he sexually assaulted a woman. So you saying that this black man, he went in to stop dancing and assault women instead? I mean, and this story got thrown under the rug. Nobody really talked about this throughout Peyton's career. Just, like, he had this image that he's some squeaky clean guy. And even when he went through this stuff, he actually signed a, a, a confidentiality agreement. He broke that to try to fix his name back in, like, uh, 2003. This was like, years after the event took place. And just to uh, make himself seem better, he just started throwing this lady under the bus, talking about, you know, I didn't like the vulgar language she was using and all this stuff, but did you put your, your nuts on the face or whatever the man did? I don't know what he did, but, you know, and the media never really talked about this. And even even now, even though now that the story is out, you don't really hear about it, not nearly as much as how they were putting Cam down for, like, just simple stuff like, Anybody, like, if you talk to me at that live in the game of 2K or something like that, I might sound the same way. Or you catch me if I'm playing basketball, a pickup game, I might feel the same way. Like, it's a human emotion, but it's it's not that serious. Right. You're not really affecting nobody else. Maybe those, those few reporters, you know, you're affecting they, you could be affecting their job, but he, it'd be different if he didn't ask any questions at all. They was asking these aggravating questions at their loss like that. But anyway... I know that that's your boy. He plays on your uh, your team. So, well, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, I was going to throw something at you real quick. We got like four minutes left. I think it, and maybe you can correct me if you're wrong. I think it has more to do with who controls the sports media than the actual two c- characters, Cam and Peyton. Most of the guys that control sports media, the major blogs, the major news sources, the reporters, they're middle-aged white men. Let's just call it for what it is, and. At the end of the day, they're going to have more of a camaraderie with Peyton. Peyton and his dad did a really good job of burying that story from college. Like you said, the confidentiality agreements, and then they went back on him, and then they wrote a book and put it out and basically lied about the whole sexual assault and what really happened. They told their version of the story. So they continue to basically play the media like a fiddle. They know the media loves Peyton. They did a great job of making Peyton a beloved character, and at the end of the day, Cam Newton came into the league before he even played one game and said, I'm trying to be an NFL icon. I'm trying to be the icon of this generation. He said he was going to be an icon before he played one game. So that that just shows you Cam came into the league with his with his mindset on being a certain way. He's not gonna he's not gonna, you know, conform to anybody. People don't want him to dance. He's gonna do his dance if he scores. If we don't want him to do it, do what the Broncos did. Keep him out the end zone, they won't see no dances. <laughs> And then he said he's going to wear his heart on his sleeve. He's not going to change for anybody. I don't know if that's going to play well in Cam's career. I do think that he's a, he's a genuine, you know, he seems like he's a good guy. He seems like, you know, if I knew him, we'd probably be friends or something like that. Probably, he, did, he doesn't seem any different than anybody I know in the same age bracket. But at the same time, Cam's got to have a little bit more more awareness as to who he's around, you know. Like a guy like Peyton. He, Peyton knows he had that huge skeleton in his closet. And look at what Peyton did over the years. The Saturday Night Live, Papa John's. 
Peyton's done a great job of making himself look a certain way. So when that skeleton came out, you know, the people in the media, the other white guys, they're not even going to ask him about it. They're like, hey, we read the book. We know what happened, Peyton. This woman's a liar. With Cam Newton, something like that came out on Cam Newton. It's over for Cam. They don't like him to begin with because he doesn't play the media game right. So I think that Cam's got to play the media game a little bit smarter as he gets older. I don't think he can continue being, oh, I'm a 26-year-old kid from Atlanta. I go to the club. Like, nah, man. You have to play, though, especially when you're losing these big games and they can't wait for you to lose because you, you are already one of the few good black quarterbacks we got left. Nah, man, you got to play it a little bit smarter, man. Like, you got to be humble when you're in the media rooms. Turn up and dab when you hit the club after y'all win. But you got to win first. So that's basically my, my thoughts on it. That's a good minute. We have about a minute remaining. Is there anything else uh, you want to say to the people before we get out of here? Hey, subscribe to the title. My album's going to be exclusively on there. <laughs> and uh, uh-huh, it's rough. This is D.U.R. signing off. Who is going to be the Medici family and let us podcast more? I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> One.